Welcome to the Ask the Expert, featuring leading neurologist and muscle physiologist, Dr. Stephen Cannon, answering some of the most often asked questions from our website and social media channels. Remember, the content in this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician with any questions regarding a specific medical condition. Our first question today comes from the Ask the Experts portal from our website. Here's Kaylee's question. I'm curious how the genetic testing works. How does the research help those of us with PP? I mean, how and what are they looking for exactly? The primary focus of our research lab over the past 30 years has been to study the mechanisms by which mutations in ion channel genes cause susceptibility to periodic paralysis. So our major contribution is taking it the next steps after discovery of a genetic defect. We want to know how this interferes with muscle function and why that uh, causes the symptoms that patients experience with either muscle stiffness or weakness. This information is critical for understanding how to proceed in a rational way to improve therapy and management in this rare disease. So what we need to do is make the mutant DNA, put it inside a cell, it will make the ion channel, and then we record the behavior of the channel. This is Marbella Quinones, who has been working in our lab for many years, and she's at a station where we manipulate DNA. One of the things about uh, working with DNA is a lot of times you need to separate the pieces and then put them together sort of like tinker toys. And we separate the pieces on the basis of the size. And the DNA is in that little tiny tube she has between her thumb and index finger, the colored dye. And so what she's going to do is load the DNA into a, a translucent slab of uh, agarose. It's literally like jello. And once all the DNA is loaded into those little wells, just a little droplet, and all lined up, then we apply a voltage across and the DNA will start to move through the jello. To really have the appropriate tool and understand why in our patients does the muscle only intermittently fail and why at some times can it have abnormally enhanced excitability and at other times loss of excitability, you really need a high fidelity, robust experimental system. And the best available one is to recreate this with a genetic model in mice. When we want to make copies of DNA and amplify a piece of it, that's in this machine. It's a thermal cycler that does the PCR or polymerase chain reaction. And all we're doing is taking our tubes. In the very bottom of this tube would be a little tiny chemical reaction that's making copies of DNA. And then when it's done copying a piece, we heat it up so that everything melts apart, comes apart. And then the pieces can reassemble and make another copy. And it goes over and over. So you get two copies, four copies, eight copies, 16 copies, 32 copies. And so you can very quickly, hugely amplify a little segment of DNA. So having created these genetically engineered mice, first of all, we were able to confirm that a single mutation is sufficient to recreate all the features of periodic paralysis. So these animals are normal most of the time, but when challenged with the appropriate stress, the same kind of trigger that causes weakness in patients, the muscle excitability fails in these animals and there's a dramatic loss of force. So that's the ultimate goal and where we're going now. Having confirmed that the mice recapitulate all the features of periodic paralysis, so we can measure muscle contraction, we can show it fails in high potassium, we can then look at interventions, small molecules, screen drugs, things that will stabilize the excitability of muscle and preserve excitability and contraction, even in the setting of these stresses that are just part of everyday life. In manipulating DNA, the steps are to first amplify it, is the PCR machine, then separate the pieces on the basis of the size, that's called gel electrophoresis in that slab of jello. And the DNA is stained with a dye that shows up under an ultraviolet light. And then we use a camera to take a picture. And so these horizontal lines is the dye that's staining a, a fragment of DNA. So that's how we use to separate big from small. For example, in our mice, we breed them and we wanna know, did they get the mutation? Because sometimes we cross a wild type mouse with a mutant mouse. And so there's 50-50 odds they could get the copy of the mutant gene. So we amplify the mouse's DNA, 
cut it with a special enzyme, and then based on how big it is, we know whether we have the mutant or the wild type mouse. So Marbella confirms what type of a mouse we have by analyzing the DNA from the mouse. You would think with all the advances in gene testing that results would come back really fast and this could all be expedited. Well, it's true that, sure, you can screen someone's DNA, but if you find a variant that's never been seen before, what does that mean? How do we know whether that's responsible for causing the disease or just some random variation? Well, that's where our lab comes in because we recreate these genetic defects and look at how they impact the function of these ion channels. This is a long, slow process, unfortunately, with the low throughput. So it takes a couple of months of uh, a skilled investigator working extensively to characterize the behavior of one gene variation to understand if the channel behavior is disrupted in a way that's consistent with causing periodic paralysis. As you can see, the research that Dr. Cannon and his team are conducting is quite large in scope and painstakingly meticulous in execution. But what you've seen here is only a portion of his research. In part two of Dr. Cannon's presentation, he further explains the mutations on genes in ion channels and how that affects how your muscles are behaving. He even shows you how they stimulate the muscles from the genetically affected mice to test how the muscle functions in multiple scenarios. And you can help Dr. Cannon right now by donating funds for research hours in his lab. Go to periodicparalysis.org backslash donate. There, you can donate directly to the crucial research needed to find better treatments and cure for this confusing and mysterious disorder. We also would like to thank our partners, Strongbridge, who are tenacious advocates by providing breakthrough medicines and establishing unique methods of treatment for people with periodic paralysis. If you would like to know more about periodic paralysis, visit periodicparalysis.org. And if you enjoyed this video and want more, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. It really does help spread the word. You can view other videos about periodic paralysis by clicking the thumbnails to the right. If you have questions, just leave a comment below or reach out to us on social media. We'd love to hear from you.